Start all. Pro Tools. All right, guys. Steve Basque is here. And this is for Julian and Patricio. I think I'm saying your name right. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I butchered it. But <laughs> this demonstration is uh, about, you know, selecting and navigating. Um, and I just thought I'd make it uh, for both of you. So listen in. So I have a session. It, I'm here in the mix Edit window. Mix checked. I like to work in the mix window a lot, but you can work in either one. Uh, there are some differences uh, depending on what you're doing, but most of the time it's fine to work this way. So uh, if I use control P and semicolon, control P to go up and semicolon to control semicolon to go down, I can navigate my selection of the track. I can move the track to select, you know, I can select different tracks. So I'll press control one P. mic. So this is the mic that I'm talking into. We're going to not worry about this track. Let's forget about Two it. Test eight. So there's this track. It's called test a, and then there's another three track. test B track three test B. So basically track two and track three and the way you number your tracks in your session is you press caps lock M, go to the Apple tool Menu bar, bar, Apple, and then go to the right to view, Pro to file, edit, view, and go down into this menu. View menu, mix window, view, narrow mix, com, edit window, rulers, other display, clip, sub waveforms, automation, expanded set, check mark, track number. See this check mark, track number, it's check mark, track number. You need to check that so that reads you the track number next to the track one mic so so on this track two a, test three test two test eight this track called test a if i press play right now the only recording i have is me counting to 10 so let's press play and listen to it really quick one two three four five six seven eight nine 10. So I'm going to put an effect on it. Let's, one mic. Let's do this. I'm going to go to insert A by double tapping one. Menu, plug in, submenu, plug dynamic. And I'm going to Pitch, pick. Delay, modulation, submenu. Modulation. Modul AIR ensemble, AIR filter gate, AIR flanger, mo AI, AIR flanger, mono. Plug in. We'll put this flanger on. on. Mix. So let's press play and see what I sound like. One, two. Tra one mic. Audio track. A. AIR flanger. I put it on the wrong track. <laughs> now I sound strange. Let's take it off. Um, so I'm going to press command one. Menu, plug in, sub. And I'm going to go no. I'm going to go up. Sir, no, no insert. And I'm going to pick no insert. One mic. Now I'm going to go to track two, two test audio track, and I'm going to put the modulation a unassigned effect menu plugin on insert plug a dynamic pit reverb delay modulation AIR AIR filter AIR flanger mono plugin. And now I'll, let's make it more pronounced. -M -M -E. So I'll go in the effects in window. One point zero zero rate parameter. And maybe I'll raise the rate. One point two point two five seven point twenty one. Let's see what it sounds like. One, two, three, eight. One. Okay. So mix. That's track A, right? I'm going to three, two, test eight. Copy the audio on track A. If I solo it off on, I know that when I play it, I'll hear it. One, two, three. So I was, when you hear that weird, my voice counting, that's, you know, with that effect, that's, that's me. I press play. So if I hit return, cause I have this track selected and I can check option shift down selected to test a audio. If since this whole recording is one clip, it's not been, there's been no fades, no editing, nothing done to it. Uh, and there's only one clip I can press control tab. And now I have a selection. If I t check to see, 
Command F3. Four bars, three beats, 700. So if I copy this, Command C now. Copy. And then I press Control semicolon to go down to track B. Three test B. Or test B. And now if I paste, because I haven't moved my time or anything, it's exactly in the same time. If I press Command paste. V, I'll have this track now that has it'll have audio on it. So Control Tab allowed me to quickly select that clip. I could have used Shift Tab to do the same thing. But see, now if I solo track two, B, three, test B by double tapping it with two, S, test, three, test B, audio. it'll just be my voice without the effect. So let's on. listen. One, two. Off. Let's three, test one. B, audio track, A, unassigned. Four, master one, three, test. Let me uh, unsolo all of them. And now if I solo te this test B track, it'll just be a normal voice. On. I accidentally had both of them soloed. So if we press play, one, two, three. And then if I go back, if I unsolo this. Off. And we go back to track two, A. Test A. Test A. And I shift S to solo it because I can do that instead of double tapping S over the track. It's another way. Whatever track's selected when you press Shift S, it will solo it. So if we do solo, we'll hear the effect now on track test A. One, two, three. So I'm going to change the sound of track B as well. Test B. I'm going to three go test to it. B. Four master three test B. And I'm going to put another effect on it. I'm going to put uh. Let's see. Menu, plugin, plug, dynamics, pitch, shit, re, pit, auto, AIR, freak, auto key, auto tune, pro, mono. I'm going to put auto tune on it. Plugin, auto tune, pro. And I'm going to pitch F -F -F -T -T the audio down. In FC, chromatic, 400, 0 ratio, 0 0.0, 0, 0, 0 0.0 ratio, 0. Transpose in parameter, mi minus 3, mi minus 5, minus 6. 1. So let's uh, solo this track now. Unsoloed all tracks. Two, t three, test B. And listen to this effect. One, two. I'm going to actually go uh, transpose it up uh, octaves. My, 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 one, two, four, five. One, two, six, three, seven, four, eight, five, five, seven, six, seven, eight. All right. So I'm going to close this window. Command Option W. Mix. I'm going to save it. Command S. Now I'm going to commit these tracks so that they are printed to audio. So they're not effects. On, there's no effects Two on test them. A audio track. So the way I do that is I select uh, both of them by going to track Four, A. Three test B. Two test, test A. A. Two test A. And then I hold shift and control and press semicolon. Three test B. Now I check with Option Shift L to make sure I have two tracks selected, t Test A and Test B. Two selected, two Test A audio, three Test B audio. Then I use the track menu by double tapping T on any of the tracks that are selected. It doesn't matter which one. One two Test A audio. So I'll use this track two, and I'll double tap T. Menu hide, and I'll go to commit. Hide make scroll move free commit il bound commit ellipsis. Commit tracks when and in this window I'll make some setting changes. Selected track consolidate clips. Check selected tracks. Pop up button. Consolidate clips. Checked. Render automation. Volume and mute. Check pet copy sends. Group assignments. Check okay. I'm gonna leave button. all I'm gonna leave all this check. Cancel basically. but offline. Do nothing. Pop up button. Menu check mark. Do nothing. But I'm I'm gonna make sure the tracks are hidden. Check mark. Delete. Make inactive. Hide and make inactive. Press hide and make and so when okay, I hit button. OK, these tracks will be renamed with a dot CM at the end. So it'll be test A dot CM and test B dot CM. That means commit, committed. Pro Tools busy. Dimmed win. So I hit return and it should have changed the tracks. Now if I use control P. One mic. Two test A dot CM. Two test A dot CM. Three test B dot CM. 
So now the sound is two test. There's no effects anymore. Save. It's they they were printed to each track. So the reason why I did that is because I'm going to demonstrate how I copy, paste, and do things. And if you can tell the difference between the Three, two tracks, two test it'll be easier. So this is track A. One, One two, two, three. And this is track Three, test B, B. Test B. One, two, three. Four. So if I, you know, they're two different tracks. Now, if I stay on this track, one, two. I'm playing them together now. One, two, three. To hear, so you can hear it. But let's say two I'm on test, track three B. Test B dot C. Three test B. So if I shift S so that I can focus just on this particular track and this sound. One, two, three. Let's, let's um, change my nudge value to like, one and a half second. So let's see. Command F7. 30 ticks. Nudge. So we're going to change it. Command Option F7. Menu. I'm going to, this menu, I'm going to pick minutes and seconds. So I'm going to go one down. One bar. One slash. One slash. One slash. One slash. One slash. One slash. Dotted. Triplet. Check mark. Min colon sex. I'm going to hit return. Test A. Now when I press Command F7. 15 milliseconds. Nudge. So in order to do, I think, 1.5 seconds, I would type, I'll press Command and double tap F7. Press Delete, then type Nut Value. So I'm going to delete, and then I'm going to press 0, period, 1, period, 5, 0, 0. Enter. And this should be, I think, 1 second, 500 milliseconds. 1 second, 500 milliseconds. Nudge. So, so let's, let's um, try this and see what happens. So if, if I hit return and I press play, and first of all, let's see where I am. I should be at the very, f let's turn it into seconds too. So if I hit command F1, it's probably going to be bars and beats. Bar one, beat one, start. So I'm going to change that. I'm going to press command option F4. Menu check mark. And I'm going to pick minutes and seconds by going up. Check mark, min colon. Or down. Min I mean. colon sex. So I'm going to hit return. Test A. Now, if I press Command F1, zero seconds, start. It says zero seconds. So now my nudge value is 1.5 seconds. So if I press plus and I press Command F1, one second, 500 milliseconds, start. So now if I press play, let's see where we landed. Three. Three. So we landed at three. So I'm going to hit return and I'm going to change my nudge value to one second. Command Double tap F7. Press delete, then type nut value. I'm going to type 0 period 1 period. Enter and check Command F7. One second. Nudge. Now I hit return. Make sure I'm at the top of the session. I can press play to see. 1. I'm right in front of 1. If I press Command F1. 0 seconds. Start. So now if I press plus and I check Command F1. 1 second. Start. I, mo I moved one second. Now press play. Two. So I'm in between one and two. So if I hit command, before I do that, let me show you something. If I press command, option, tab. Tab to transients, off. Tab to transient, transients is off. So let's, let's try to navigate with tab to transients. So... If I hit tab right now, it's going to go to the very end of this audio clip. The audio clip is me, re the recording of me saying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So if we check where we are right now, because I hit return, we're at the top of the session. Zero seconds. Zero Com seconds. Start. Command F1. That's Command F1. Now, if I press tab. And I press Command F1. Nine seconds, 918 milliseconds. Start. We're now at nine seconds. Because we moved from one boundary of the clip, the, the start point, to the end point of the clip. So now, if I press play, we won't hear anything. I press play, there was nothing. If you have the pre-post roll set up, so that you can hear where you... You're, so my... 
insertion point is at the very edge of this clip. If I check my pre post roll, Command F9, two seconds, pre roll amount, and Command F10, two seconds, post roll amount. So F9 is Command F9 is pre roll, Command F10 is post roll. Now, in order to play, you know, in front of my insertion point two seconds, which is pre roll, I would press option left arrow and it will play two seconds and then stop where my insertion point is. And my insertion point is at almost 10 seconds in the timeline. If I press command F1, nine seconds, 918 milliseconds start. It's very, it's very close. So if I hit option left arrow, we're going to hear me probably say part of nine, se nine, I'll probably say nine and 10 or maybe just 10. Well, let's, let's see option left arrow. Nine, ten. So it said nine, ten. If I hit Command right arrow, you don't you don't hear anything. There's nothing heard because I'm at the very end of this 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 clip. So um, tab tabbing without tab to transients on allows you to jump from boundary to boundary when there's a bunch of clips on your track. So let's make more clips. Let's, let's cut this track up into sections. So remember, Command F7 is my nudge value. One second, nudge. So one second. So I hit return, I press play, and we'll hear one. One. I'm at that just to verify that we're at the top of this session, at the beginning of the song. If I hit Command F1, it's zero seconds. Zero seconds. Now I'm gonna press plus, and I'm gonna press Spacebar to tell you, show you that I'm right in front of two now. Two. If I hit Command F1. One second. Start. It tells me I'm at one second because I nudged one second forward. Now it's important to note that if you have a selection when you press the nudge value or the nudge plus like plus or minus when you if you have a selection, you will nudge the audio clip that you have you will move it. It'll become a clip. I'll demonstrate that in a little bit, but let's cut this clip in between one and two when I say one and two. So the way I do that, because I'm already between one and two, is I press command E. Add selection. And it says add selection. So now if I hit return and I press play, we'll be at one. One, two, so we're at the beginning again, right? Command F1. Zero seconds. Start. Now, if I check Command Option Tab. Tab to transients off. So it's off. So let's tab now. If I tab now, where do you think I'm going to be? Well, I should be at one second in the timeline. Like if I check Command F1. One second. Start. I am. Because it went to the the area where I slice the audio into a clip. So there's two clips now, technically. And the first clip is the recording where I say one. And then the second clip is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because that was a, you know, we sliced the audio clip at between one and two. So if I hit tab now again, and press play, we won't hear anything. I just pressed play, there was nothing. So if I hit command F1, we should be at nine seconds, like 900 some milliseconds at the very end of the clip. Nine seconds, 918 milliseconds, start. So there you go. If I hit option left arrow, we'll hear part of nine and 10, like me saying nine and 10. So option left arrow. Nine, 10. So that's again, I'm going to go to the top, return. If I hit tab once, I move to where we severed the clip. It'll, if I press play, it'll say two. Two. And if I hit tab again and press play, you don't hear anything because we're at the end of the clip. If I hit option left arrow, you'll hear two seconds play all the way to my insertion point. Nine. Ten. And so let's let's show that here. I'm gonna hit return, go to the top of the session. I'm at zero seconds. Zero second. 
I'll press play. You'll hear where I am. One. I'm right in front of one. One. So if I hit tab, I'm going to demonstrate the pre and post roll because maybe that's you don't understand that. If you edit the pre and post roll, so like if you hit command F9. Two seconds. Pre-roll amount. And you want to change this, you hold command and double tap F9. Press delete, then type pre-roll amount. And I could change it to something else, but I'll leave it to, at two seconds. So command F9 is pre-roll. Two seconds. Pre-roll amount. And command F10 is post-roll. Two seconds. Post-roll amount. And so if I use this to my advantage with the keyboard shortcut that includes option and command and the arrows, left and right arrows, I'm able to play the two seconds in front of my insertion point and the two seconds after my insertion point. So the way you do that is holding option. And, the, and since I don't have a selection, all I have to do is press option for this, this, this particular uh, function. So if I press option and hit left arrow, what we'll hear is we'll hear one because the insertion point is in between one and two. So let's press option left arrow. One. And it played to the insertion point. Now, if I press command right arrow, it'll play two seconds after from my insertion point out to the end of the session, but only two seconds because when I press command F10 to check two seconds post roll, my post roll is two seconds. And so we want to uh, press command and right arrow to play post roll two, three. So see, I played everything before my insertion point one by pressing option left arrow and everything after my insertion point command right arrow two, three. Now let's say I make a selection. Let's let's my where I am is at right before two, right? If I hit the space bar. Two. And I can check where I am in time. Command F1. One second. I'm one second into this audio track. So if I use the make up arrow. Window. Quick nav off. I turn quick nav off, because you can't use the up and down arrow if, on a track to select if you don't if you have quick nav on. So if I press play and I wait for two to be said, and then right after two is said, I press the up arrow, I will make a selection. So here we go. Two. So I made a selection. If I press play, it will should just play the selection. Two, 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 two. So loop playback is on. Command shift L. Loop playback checked. So I'll leave it on. But I'm going to demonstrate pre and post roll again. So if I press space bar, Two, two, two. I'm going to turn, actually, uh, loop playback Loop off. playback. Command shift, double tap L. So if I press play, two. you hear the selection. If I want to hear what's two seconds in front of my selection because my pre-roll is two seconds, I hold option and press left. And since we're at such at the beginning of the song, there's not two seconds. It's just like one second. So it's going to say one. So I'll press option left arrow to hear pre-roll. One. I'll press space bar to play the selection. Two. And then the end point of this, you know, the, the post roll is after my selection. So command and right arrow. Three, four. So again, pre-roll is in front of my selection. Option left arrow. One. Press play to hear my selection. Two. And then command right arrow to hear after my selection. Three, four. Now, when you edit, you know, the pre and post roll, you have to be sure to take off uh, your, uh, the, you have to turn off pre and post roll because it turns it on. So let's do that. If I press command and double tap F9. Press delete, then type pre roll amount. And change it to three seconds, zero period, three period, enter. And if I check command F9, three seconds, pre-roll amount. Now, what you didn't realize is anytime you edit the pre and post roll values, it turns pre and post roll on. So if I press command K, pre-post roll checked. That's how you turn it on and off. 
Well, you check it by just pressing Command K, and it says it's selected. And you would use pre and post roll to help record a musician, like a guitar player. Because, you know, if you're punching him in and he's playing, like he played something and then he messes up, and you, he, but he played everything else really good, you might just want him to play the part that he messed up. So you would select that part that's messed up and you would turn pre and post roll on and you'd ask him, hey, do you need one bar, two bars to get in sync? And, and that he would say, yeah, two bars. So then you would go change your pre-roll to two bars. And when you have it on and you have that selection, when you press play, he will hear the music leading up to the selection. And so he can start playing and he'll get in sync. And as soon as it hits the selection, it will record. And then it'll stop recording at the end of the selection. And that's called quick punch um, or just punching in, just making a selection and, and then arm, you know, arming the track and making a selection and then hitting command space bar to record. But if you have pre-roll on, you're going to get, you're going to get three seconds and two seconds, three second pre-roll, two second post-roll. Cause that's what I have configured. Command F9, three seconds, pre-roll amount and command F10, two seconds, post-roll amount. So let me show you what happens if you forget that it's on and you are playing. So let's say I hit return and I press play. Let's see if it's still on. Command K. Pre post roll checked. It's still on. So I'm going to hit play and I'm going to drop an insertion point right before five. One, two, three, four, five. So I press the down arrow right before five and then I hit the space bar to pause the audio. So let's press play and see if I'm in front of five two i'm not but i really am it's because pre post pre and post roll is on it's very confusing you have to remember to turn it off because when you have pre post roll on it's going to play three seconds in front of your insertion point and two seconds after because that's what i have in the settings right command f9 three seconds pre roll amount and command F10. Two seconds. Post roll amount. So when I press play, it's not in front of five. Two, three. But let's turn pre post roll off. Command double tap K. Pre slash post roll. Now if I press play. Five. C. If I turn pre post roll on. Pre slash post roll checked. It, it adds three seconds to pre roll and two seconds to post roll. And since I don't have a selection, like I was explaining with the guitar player, I just have an insertion point. It just plays three seconds in front of the insertion point and two seconds after. So if I press play, it's not where I dropped my insertion point. Even though when I played, I could hear, you know, where I was kind of. So if I press play. Two, three, four, five. So yeah. Just make sure to turn pre and post roll off because quick nav on. Quick nav off. It's, it can be very confusing. And anytime you edit the pre and post roll values, command F9 and command F10, it will be on. So I'm going to hold command and to double tap K. Pre slash post roll. And now it's off. So we're at five. Five. So I'm going to hit return. And I'm going to, I'm going to slice between two and three now. So Remember my nudge value, command F7. One second, nudge. My nudge value is one second. So if I press plus, I'll be at one second, which was where I put a slice already, uh, uh, you know, a separation with command E. Command E is how you separate clips. So if I press command F1. One second, start. And I press play. Two. You hear two. Now if I press plus and press play, I, we should hear three. Three. So I'm going to separate the clip here. Command E. At selection. I just sliced the audio. So now we have three clips. We have a clip that has one recorded on it. We have a clip that has two recorded on it. And a clip that we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten on it. So I'm going to hit return. And I'm going to press play. One. 
So we're at the beginning of the session. Command F1 to, to check. Zero seconds. Start. So if I hit tab, we should be at the slice or separation that's between one and two. So my cursor or insertion point should be right before two. Let's press play. Two. All right. Let's um, press tab one more time. Now, where do you think I am? I should be in front of the three because we did a separation between two and three. So let's press play. Three. And if I check command F1, we should be at three seconds because my nudge value is three seconds. And we were at the very beginning of the song at zero seconds. So every time I press plus, we go three seconds. So let's press command F1. Two seconds. Start. Oh, I'm sorry. We're actually only at two seconds because I only hit it twice. That's right. So if I hit return and I'm at zero, zero seconds, start, and I press plus, I go past one. And, and then if I press plus again, I go two seconds and I'm in front of three. Three. So let's, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to press plus and then space bar. I'm in front of four now. Four. I'm going to press command at E. Selection. I'm going to press plus again. I should be in front of five. Five. So I'm going to command E. I'm going to press plus. I'm going to press play. Six. I'm going to command E. Add selection. So I'm making slices in between each of the numbers. Press play. Seven. So command Add E. selection. Plus. Eight. Command Add E. selection. Plus. Nine. And I'm pressing the space bar to play the audio. And then I press it again to pause it. So I'm going to hit command E to slice between eight and nine. Add selection. And then plus once more. Ten. I'm in front of ten. Now command Add E. selection. So now I've sliced between all of the audio. So if I hit return and I press play, if we listen, nothing's going to sound different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I played through that entire track. And this track is Option Shift L. Let's see what track. One selected. Three test B dot CM. This is test B dot CM. So this is the third track in my session. So I hit return. I'm at the top of the session. If I hit tab, I'll be in front of two. Two. If I hit tab again, I'll be in front of three. Three. If I hit tab again, I'll be in front of four. Four. And so on. Five. Six. Seven. Now, if I want to go backwards. Seven. So I'm at the separation between six and seven. Seven. If I press option tab. I should be back at before six. Six. So when I hit play, six. you hear six. If I hit option tab, it goes back to the next slice, the previous slice. So what should I be in front of? Five. Five. If I hit it again, option tab, I should be in front of four. Four. Now, if I want to go back to the next slice, I hit tab. Five. So maybe, hopefully that's making more sense. Tab again. Six. I'm in front of six. If I press it a bunch of times, I'm ten. at 10. ten. So that's how you can navigate with the tab key. And you're basically moving to the boundaries of these clips, you know. And so in order to have, you could drag clips and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to show you how we, I'm going to take audio from track A, test A, to t to, and put it on test B. And you'll hear the different. That's why I, I changed the, vo vo the voice sound. So let's, let's do that real quick. Well, let's try one more thing. I'm going to turn tab to transients on. So command option tab. Tab to transients on. I command option double tap tab. And now my, it's going to navigate different. Somewhat similar, but different. We aren't going to move to the clip boundaries, the slices. We're going to move to the transient. So if I press play, I didn't hit tab yet. I'm going to press play. One. So I'm not, there's some space between the cursor, the insertion point, and one. One. So if I hold shift tab and press play, see, it's playing it's playing the audio, which there is no audio, but it, there's space because it's selected 
everything from the beginning of this tra- session, zero seconds, to the very first instance of the sound peak. If you could see visually, uh, if, if anybody's not told you, when you visually look at sound waves, they have spikes. You know, they go up and down like mountains. They look like triangles. And so what's happening is the transient is right when the mountain starts to go up. Like, and so what it did was it selected to right when it starts, when I start saying one, when one starts getting louder. So let's, let's hit return and press play. One, one. Okay. So now I'm, I hit return. I'm at zero seconds. If I hit shift tab, it's going to select the empty time, the empty space and a little bit of one. Let's press play. So that's all it's selected. If I hold shift again and press tab, it should select a little bit more of one because it's going to go past the transient. So let's press play now. All I did was I pressed shift tab twice. One. So if I hit return and I do shift tab and we're navigating with tab to transients and I press play, I only did shift tab once. It just gets part of one, like the very initial first little bit. If I hold shift and press tab again, it's going to select all of one, mostly. One. One. If I hit command right arrow to check with pre, you know, post roll. Two. Three. You heard two seconds after my selection. So if I want to select the space now, kind of in between one and two, I would do shift tab one more time. Now, if I press play, it might play one and then it might say just a little bit of two. Let's hear what, let's see what happens. One. Two. So see, cause the transient starts to go up to, you, you, you know, as you say it. So that's, if you could visually see a sound wave, you would see the transient. So if I hold shift and press tab, it's going to select part of two. One, two. So, so see, we're moving a little differently in the timeline. We're editing or selecting audio in a different way. So depending on what you want to do, tab to transients could be on or off. I'm going to turn it off. Command option, double tap, tab. Tab to transients, off. Now I'm going to move to track, uh, test track A. To so test A.cm. This to test A. I'm going to option shift, double tap S. So option shift S tells me what tracks are soloed. One soloed, three test B.cm, audio. And I don't want it soloed anymore because if you forget, you're not going to hear t- track test a you're just going to hear test b because that's what i had soloed so option shift double tap s unsoloed all tracks and i unsoloed all tracks now i want to make sure that i'm on track a test a option shift l to c one selected two test a dot cm audio so i'm on test a so i'm going to solo this now so i'm going to press i'm going to press shift s See, that's how you can solo if it's selected. One. One. So now it's a different sound effect, right? If I hit Shift S again, you'll hear both tracks playing. One, two, three. So another way is you could just use Quick Nav or Caps Lock Left Arrow and find quick the nav track. Expanded. Mix, mix window. Excel group, group, groups. Track five, four, three, two test A dot one mic, two test A dot CM. Audio track. So I moved to test A in the mix window. Now I could double tap S if the inspector is on. So you press the slash key. Inspector off. It's off. Now I turn back on. on. Now if I press M, off. it tells me mute is off. If I press R, not armed. It tells me it's not armed because R will arm the track. If I tap S, off. solo is off. If I want to turn it on, on, I double tap S. And now if I press play, one. Two. You just hear this. So I could unsolo it though with Shift S. So now I press Shift S, but that's a Pro Tools command. Flow Tools is the S, double tapping the S and pressing the S. Pro Tools is Shift S. And it's just 
any track that you have selected. So now if I press play, you'll hear both tracks. One. So, but I want this soloed. Or I'm not going to solo it right now. I'm just going to leave it playing together. But I'm going to select I'm going to select 5 and I'm going to do that with the up and down arrow. So I'm going to let it play. Quick nav off. I'm going to make sure quick nav is off and I'm going to play and I'm going to push the down arrow right before 5 and the up arrow after. So here we go. 1 2 3 4 5 6 So I made a selection. I pressed space bar to pause. If I press play to check Five. So let's solo this track, Shift S. So make a note of the sound, excuse me, the sound. I'm going to press play. It sounds like a Star Wars. Five. Five. Some sort of robot. So what I'm going to do is now when you cut audio from a track, sometimes you want the audio to slam together or you want a space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn slip mode on by double tapping F2. If I touch F1, shuffle mode on. It tells me shuffle mode is on. If I touch F2, slip mode off. Slip mode is on or off. So if I double tap F2, slip mode on. And I press command X because I have a selection. It's this is my selection. 5. Command X. Cut to test A.cm. It cut the audio. Now I haven't moved anything. If I press play, what's going to happen is you're going to hear nothing, and then it should say maybe six. Six. So that's what happens when you have slip mode on. Let's hit return and listen to this track playback. Remember, I selected five, and I command X to cut and with slip mode on, and that allowed the tracks to stay in place. So let's hit return and press play. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So you heard nothing at five. That's because it's in slip mode when I when it was in slip mode when I cut the audio out of the track. So I'm gonna hit Command Z and undo. Undo cut. And now I'm gonna press play. It should have restored my selection back to where it was and it'll have five selected so let's press play five so now if i hit return and press play it should all the track should be back together one two three four five six seven so everything is normal now so if i wanted to redo that i could press command shift z redo cut and now if i press play six it's it redid the cut, but I'm going to hit command Undo Z cut. and I still have my selection on five, five. This time, instead of slip mode, I'm going to show you what happens when you're in shuffle mode. So double tap F1 because F1 is for shuffle mode, shuffle mode on. So now it's on. Now, if I cut the audio here, what's going to happen is this is the selection is five. Listen, five. So in after five, if I press command right arrow to check with post roll, six, seven is six, seven. So my selection is five, five, command right arrow for post roll, six, seven is telling me that the audio after this is six, seven. So since I'm in shuffle mode and I delete or if I cut this audio so I could cut it, command X. You cut it so that you can paste it somewhere else. You want to cut it and remove it from one place and then command V and paste it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this and put it on the other track in a moment. But first, I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut it. So I have this selection. Five. I'm going to hit command X. Now, if I press play in slip mode, there was a blank space. There's no blank space now. If I press play, you're going to hear six immediately because shuffle, the audio shuffled to the left. It filled the gap. So let's press play. Six. So I'm going to go to the top of the session to show you it in context. If I hit return and press play. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. 
10. So you notice that five is gone and four and six came together really close. The clips came together. See, if I hit return and I'm at one, one, and I hit tab because there's a slice there, we cut it. Remember when we cut the audio out, we made a blank space and the audio came smack, smack together. It came tight. If I hit tab, I should be at that slice. Now, if I press play, Six. See, my insertion point is right on that slice. Six. So if I hit option left arrow, you'll hear three seconds in front of this, this insertion point. Two, three, four. And then if I hit command right arrow, you'll hear two seconds after. Six, seven. So I'm going to turn my pre-roll back to two seconds. So command double tap F9. Press delete, then type pre-roll amount. Zero period, two period, enter. And then remember, like I told you, whenever you edit those, it turns pre post roll on. So I'm going to hit command K to see if it's on. It'll say selected if it's on. Pre post roll checked. I'm going to hold command and double tap K. Pre slash post roll. So now I, I'm still in the same place right in front of six six so we took five we cut it right command x i want to move it now and put it in front of in between one and two okay on the other track so i'm going to unsolo this shift s now i'm going to press play and i should hear both voices six five, seven, six, eight. seven. so it's i'm going to hit return and go to the top of the session now we'll hear one two one, one two, two. Three, four, six, five, seven, six, seven, eight, seven, nine. So you see one track is offset now because we cut the audio out. So what I'm going to do is check what track I'm on. Option shift L. One selected. Two test A dot CM audio. So I want to move my selection of my track to test B. Three test B dot CM. So I pressed control and semicolon to go down to move my selection. Now I'm going to solo this track, shift S. This track has got another funny voice, but there's no, the five is fine. Let's listen to it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's nothing changed on this track, but we did slice it up, remember? And since we don't have tab to transients on, I'll check command option tab tab to transients off. It's off. I can tab to the select the slices, the separations. So I told you that I wanted to paste the audio that I cut the number five from track a test a to test B. So I'm on test B. I, I had my selection on test a and I cut the audio. Then I moved to test B by control semicolon down. And now I'm going to hit return, I make sure I'm at one. One. So I'm at the top of the session. If I press tab, I know that there's a slice here. So I can just press command V to paste it. Let's first press play. It should say two. Two. So I'm right in between one and two. If I hit option left arrow, it should say one. One. And if I hit command right arrow, it should say two. Two. Three. So it just did two seconds after in the post roll. So if I hit command V. Paste and press play, it'll, it'll say five, five, because it's got a selection. I pasted my five in between one and two, and the selection is still there, five. But if I want to break the selection, I hit return, and now if I press play, we should hear one, five, two, three, four, and so on. So let's listen. One, five, two, three, four. So let's take another number from above. I'm going to go control T. Test A dot CM. So test A track is selected. And I'm going to press play. And I'm going to use the down arrow and up arrow to select some more audio. I'm going to select a different number. I'm going to select 8. 1. 5. 2. 3. 4. Oh, I forgot. I got to unsolo the track. So you have to remember or you'll get lost. 
So Option Shift Double Tap S. Unsoloed all tracks. And because I have Test A, tra the Test A track selected, let's make sure though. Option Shift L. One selected. Two Test A dot C M audio. So now if I hit Shift S, I can. I also can check to see after I solo a track what tracks are soloed. So let's say Option Shift S. One soloed. Two Test A dot C M audio. So. So track two is soloed. If I move control semicolon down, test B dot C M. and now this track three is selected, if I hit shift S, there'll be two tracks selected or soloed. So if I hit option shift S, two soloed, two test A dot C M audio, three test and, B dot C M audio. So both track two and three, test A and test B are selected or soloed. Um, only one track is selected right now, track three. If I hit Option Shift L, one selected, three test B dot C M audio. So, if I press play, we're going to hear both of them because they're both soloed. All solo means is to mute every other track but the track that's soloed. So, since I have both tracks soloed, nothing is muted because these are the only two sounds in the session. So, Five, eight. so I'm going to Option Shift Double Tap S. Unsoloed all tracks. I'm going to use Control P to go to track two, test A. Two test A dot C M. I'm going to hit return, and I'm going to press play. I'm going to also solo it, Shift S, but I'm going to press play, and then I'm going to select track a uh, uh, number eight. When I say eight, one, one two, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. So I messed up. I, I didn't press it fast enough. Nine. Nine. So. Pre post roll. I wanted to double check that I didn't have pre post roll on, so I pressed Command K. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my nudge value. So, Command, double tap F7. Press delete, then type nudge value. And I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to make it ticks, not a bar and not a beat, but ticks. And I'm going to make it 30 ticks. So I'm going to type zero because there's zero bars, period, zero beats, and then period, and then three zero for 30 ticks. Enter. Now Command F7. 30 milliseconds. Nudge. Or I'm, in, I'm not in bars and beats right now. I'm in minutes and seconds. So that's fine. 30 milliseconds. So if I press play, nine, nine. I'm at nine. So if I hit minus... What I should do is go back 30 milliseconds. And then if I hit play, nine. nine. So let's hit minus again and press play. Nine. nine. Minus again. Nine. nine. I'm going to hit minus like six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to press play. Eight. Eight. So I'm almost in front of eight. I'm going to press minus three times and press play. Eight. eight. So eight. eight, I'm kind of in front of eight. If I want to check, remember your pre-roll and post-roll. So option left, it should say, you know, six, seven, six, seven, eight. So you hear, you heard, you heard it say it cut off eight a little bit. Let's hear it again. Option left arrow, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to hit minus again and press play. It's going to play from my insertion point, and it should say eight. Eight. But I want to hear if I'm in front of eight. I want to hear if my insertion point is in front of eight. So I'm going to do option left arrow. Six, seven. Eight. Still, I still have a little bit of eight. You can barely hear it. Let's try here. Listen again. Option left arrow. It's playing two seconds in front of my insertion point. Six, seven. Eight. So I'm going to hit minus. I'm going to hit option left arrow again. All I'm doing is moving the insertion point in front of the eight more every time, 30, 30 milliseconds. So if I hit option left arrow, we shouldn't hear it this time, I don't believe. Six, seven. Just a little bit. It's a pop. It's very hard to, to you start to notice this. Sometimes it's good to wear headphones when you're editing audio. Option left arrow. Six, seven. Did you hear that little pop? It's so faint, very subtle. I'm going to hit minus one more time and option left arrow. Six, seven. Now I don't really hear anything. I think I'm in front of the eight. If I press play, eight, 
I am. But I'm going to do it a few more times because I want a little bit of space. So I'm going to do one, two, three. Now, if I press play, eight. eight. Okay. So my insertion point is right in front of eight. So now I'm going to press play and I'm going to push the up arrow when it's after eight, after I say eight. So here we go. Eight. eight. So I made a selection. Now, if I press play, eight. eight. All right. So I'm going to cut this again, but I'm going to turn it into slip mode. So double tap F2 instead of being in shuffle mode, because I want there to be a gap between seven and nine, you know, when I'm, I have a selection, right? Eight, eight. When I cut this, if I am in shuffle mode, it would just smack slam together. There would be no space, but I'm going to put it in slip mode, slip mode on, and I'm going to cut it. Command cut. X. Now, if I press play, there'll be a blank space and then it'll say the next number nine. nine. So if we hit return, and listen to this, it's going to be one, two, three. It's weird. The five is gone. It's going to be one, two, three, four, six, seven, and then space, and then nine. So let's listen. One, two, three, four, six, seven, nine, ten. I hope this is making sense. So now I'm going to hold control and move my selection. Well, first, I'm going to de-solo. I'm going to... I can hold Option Shift and double tap S. Unsoloed all tracks. Now, if I press play, we hear all the sounds, the both both tracks. One. So I paused it. I'm gonna go Control Semicolon to go down to track three, test three B. Three test B dot C M. And now I want to find a place where I want to paste it. And so, if you're in slip mode, it's gonna cover up the audio. If you're in shuffle mode, it's going to insert it in between like it did with this five. Let's press play and listen. It's one, five, three, right? Because we pasted the five in between three, uh, three and or two and one. So let's hear, it's going to be one, five, two, I guess. I, I can't remember where we put the five. Let's press play. One. Oh, let's solo it. Shift S because I have track three selected. One. Five, two. So we put the five in between one and two. Let's go do something similar. I have the eight and I want to put it in between. But the thing is, is it's not going to be able to go in between. It's going to do something different. It's going to lay the audio on top of the other audio and mask the audio beneath it because we're in slip mode. Quick nav on. Quick nav. So I'm going to press play and we're going to listen and I'm going to drop it in between five and six. One, five, two, three, four, five, six, six. So I'm, I'm like right in front of six, kind of right behind five. If I hit option left arrow, we'll hear two seconds in front of my insertion point. Four, five. And command right arrow, we'll hear two seconds after. Six, seven. So if I press minus key a few more times i'll get right in the middle between five and six so option left arrow to check four five boom i'm at the insertion point now after the insertion point six seven so to double check commit just press f2 to see if you're in slip mode slip mode on now if we paste this we're going to get a different kind of you know um uh, experience in the sense of like how the audio is pasted with the audio. So command Paste. V. If I hit space bar, it's just going to play what I had cut. Eight. Eight. And it got part of the, so let's listen to this. Let's hit return and press play and see what's different. Cause it didn't, it didn't insert the audio in between very well. It just put it, it just placed it on top of the audio. One. Five, two, three, four, five, eight, six, seven. See, it kind of covered up six. If we listen, let's let's fast forward to right before. Five, four, eight, seven, eight, five. So we're here at five, five eight, six. So if I go back a little bit more. Five. So I'm right in front of five. If we press play. Five. Eight. Six. 
seven. It covered up six. So if I want to undo that command undo Z, paste. and I was like, oh, I need to be in shuffle mode. Now I press F1 and double tap it. Shuffle mode on. And if I press play, my, my insertion point should be in the same place. Six. So I'm right in front of six. Six. Because it put it back. It put it back because of of undoing. Now, if I press Command V, paste. And if we rewind, if I hold one on the numeric keypad and rewind, eight, four. And then we're here somewhere like by four. If I press play, it should be four, five, you know, and then eight, six. You should hear six better this time because what it did was it shuffled the audio over it. It let the five go in between, or the eight go in between five and six. So let's play. Four, five, eight, six, seven. So that's shuffle and slip, and and so you're. I'm showing you how to navigate, how to select. You know. So let's uh, let's undo some of undo, this. Undo, undo, cut, undo. Un undo separate at select undo separate at redo redo separate at redo separate at redo cut undo cut so i un undid everything so everything should be normal now so i'm going to unsolo everything option shift s unsoloed all tracks and i'm going to press return go to the top of the session and press play we should hear both voices one two three four five six seven eight all right, so let's go to track test B, track three test three B. Three test B dot CM. So I used control semicolon to make sure I went down to it. Now let's check it, see if it's selected. Option shift L. One selected, three test B dot CM audio. So, so I'm gonna show you what control tab does. I don't think I did that. Control tab selects the next clip. It keeps going to the next clip. Like, so if I'm at zero seconds at the top of the session, I hit return. Zero seconds. Start. Press command F1 to see my, my start, where my insertion is. If I hit control tab, it should select, because remember, we sliced this track up. I didn't undo that. We have slices. One, we have each number is its own slice or separate, separation or clip. So if I press play, it should be just one. 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 Let me solo this track because I just want to hear it. Shift S and I'm going to press play. One. Because before you could hear both of them, right? Shift S, you could hear it. One. If I hit Shift S again, you just hear one, this one track we're working on. One. And if I hit Control Tab again, it should have deselected one and selected the next clip, which is two. Two. And if I want to get to the next clip, Control tab, it deselected two and selected only clip three. Three. And you can always check to see if you have a selection by pressing Command three F three. One second length. So I have a one se second selection. So if I hit Control tab again, it deselected three and it deselected four. Four. So Command Command F three. One second length. So you know you don't have to work on the boundaries. I could have dropped the, you know, you can you can move wherever you want. Just remember that when you do edits or you paste clips, it creates boundaries. It creates clips. And you when you hit tab, when tab to transients is off, you move to the boundaries of clips. If tab to transients is on, you move to the sound waves, the little spikes in the audio. So, and if you include shift, it selects. And so... You know, just like tabbing forward, I showed you. If I hit return and I tab. Two. T we're at two. If I tab. Three. Three. Four. Four. Five. So if I hit option tab, I'll be back at in front of four. Four. Option tab goes back to three. Three. I'm right in front of three. My insertion point is in front of three. If you want to select going backwards, you hold option shift tab. So I was just saying option tab. So again return to go to the top of the session if i press tab twice i should be in front of three three so there's no selection if i wanted to select going forward i could hold shift and tab and i've selected track or number three three want to include four 
The next clip, I hold shift and press tab. Now, if I press play, it's three and four. Three, four, five. And part of five, because I didn't do a great selection or cut. I cut, I cut the audio pretty close. So if I wanted to deselect it, what I do is I just interrupt it by pressing rewind one or two on the, you know, one for rewind, two for fast forward on the numeric keypad. So I'll just hold one, three, and it, now there's no selection. Two, three, four. But if I wanted to get back to one of the slices, I hit tab, and now I should be like right in front of three, I think. Three. So yeah. So if I wanted to select the, the, the number, the clip before three, I would hold option, shift, and tab. Now three is selected. So when I press play, it only plays three. Two. Sorry, two. We were in front of three. I, I'm, I apologize. I'm getting tired. <laughs> so, but if I wanted to let that selection go, I could hold control and tab and it'll select three now. Three. So you, you kind of get it like it's just different ways of moving around. And I recommend that you just play around with this stuff so that you get the hang of it. So hope that helps both for you, Patricio and, and Julian. Have a wonderful uh, day, night, where, wherever you are in the world. And I'll talk with you guys later. Wirecast. Bosky 3.